Hello everyone. I know in my last video I said I'm going to go over demultiplexers in this one, but I changed my mind. I decided that I'm going to show you how to build larger multiplexers from the 2-1 multiplexer that we built in the last video. So, you may recall that a 2-1 multiplexer looks something like this. With our two inputs, selector and outputs. We called this I0, I1, S0, and Y. So we can use this 2-1 multiplexer to build uh, bigger multiplexers. So we'll build a 4-1 multiplexer, and then we'll build an 8-1 multiplexer. So let's do our 4-1 multiplexer. <laughs> this 4 right here is just the number of inputs and the one is just the number of outputs. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and look at our 2-1 multiplexer. Well, we have two inputs and one output. So to get four inputs, we'll need to start with two 2-1 multiplexers. So let's build one. Call this I0, I1, S0, and Y. And we'll build another one. We'll call this one I0, I1, S0, and Y. And now we have our four inputs. We'll call those I0, I1, I2, and I3. But we need one output, and right now we have two outputs. But we have two inputs on our 2-1 multiplexer and one output on our 2-1 multiplexer. So we're going to go ahead and draw one more 2-1 multiplexer. our same inputs and we'll connect these so whatever our selector is here that'll choose our input I0 or I1 and bring it to our second multiplexer into I0 and whatever our selector is here for S0 It'll select I2 or I3 and bring it into our input for I1. But we need to figure out a way to select uh, these two and this one. So for our 4 1 multiplexer, we'll have two binary uh, input selectors S1 and S0. And our leftmost uh, value is going to be our most significant bit and this one right here is going to be your most significant multiplexer because the value of S1 changes the decimal equivalent of this binary number more heavily than what S0 would do. So this input right here will be S1 and this input here will be S0 and this one will also be S0. And you may recall from our last video that the um, circuit within the 2-1 multiplexer looks something like this. So each multiplexer, or each 2-1 multiplexer, will have this circuit within it. So we can pretty much build this circuit three different times, and then we'll have our multiplexer. But that's a lot of work, and this is just a shorter way of doing that. And we can draw out a 4-1 multiplexer, kind of like we did with our 2-1 multiplexer and it will look like this with our inputs I0, I1, I2, and I3 and our output Y and our inputs S1 and S0. So this is our 4-1 multiplexer.
So let's use our 4-1 multiplexer to build an 8-1 multiplexer. So we will have 8 inputs and 1 output. And the quickest way to do this would be to use 2 of the 4-1 multiplexers, and that will give us 8 inputs and 2 outputs, and then connect those 2 outputs to the 2-1 multiplexer to get 1 output. So, let's draw our 2 4-1 multiplexers. And then our 2-1 multiplexer. So this is our 4-1, 4-1, and 2-1. And this will be our I0, I1, I2, I3, I0, I1, I2, R3, S1, S0, S1, S0, and I0, I1, I2, I3, and then I4, I5, I6, I7. And then we will connect our outputs, Y, to I0 and I1 of the 2, 1 multiplexer, to our second output, Y. And now, you'll have three possible uh, binary combinations for the 8-1 multiplexer. We will have S2, S1, and S0. I'll draw that more straight. <laughs> And our S2 is our leftmost, so this is our most significant bit. It's going to change the value of this decimal equivalent more heavily than S1 or S0 could. And this 2-1 multiplexer chooses between these four and these four, so this must be our most significant multiplexer. So that'll be S2. <clears throat> and then our S1 and S0 will just stay the same for the 4-1 multiplexers. Alright everyone, thank you for watching. Um, I hope I explained everything well. And now my next video will be over demultiplexers. Thank you.